Welcome to AP Statistics. In this video, we're going to talk about percentiles. They are a great way to determine a value's position in the data. So now there's lots of different ways that we can measure a value's position. So think about a data set and you got a bunch of data, a bunch of values, a bunch of numbers, and every number has its own position within the data. So some very common ones I know you've heard of before is things like min and max, right? The min's the lowest value, the max is the highest value. That's a specific position in the data, the highest to lowest. Well, we mentioned earlier, if you've been watching my series of videos, we talked about the first quartile. The first quartile is um, the bottom, or the middle of the bottom half of data, right? Then we got the third quartile and the second quartile. So let me explain. If here is our data from min to max, right smack dab in the middle is the median. Remember, the median doesn't even care what the values are. It just wants to be the middle number. So if we think about the middle of the bottom, that's our first quartile, Q1, and the middle of the top is our third quartile. Okay, so these are some very easy positions of data, right? The median is the middle position. The Q1 is the bottom half, the middle of the bottom half, right? And all that and so forth. But another great way is with a percentile. And I'm actually going to link a percentile into all of this by the end of this. But a percentile is a really cool way to tell a value what its position is. So let's talk about the definition of a percentile. So the P percentile is interpreted as the value that has P percent of the data less than or equal to it. Every individual data value has its own percentile because every value has a percentage of data that is at or below it. So uh, that might be a little bit of a confusing definition. So let's look at some examples. So for example, maybe you take the SAT and you are told in your score report that you are at the 85th percentile. That means that 85% of students scored at or below your score, 15% scored better than you. So again, that instantly tells you, your percentile tells you where you are at. It tells you your position in the data. So if you think of all of the SAT scores from the entire United States and you fall at the 85th percentile, that means 85% of kids are at or below your score and 15% above you. So that literally tells you where your position is. How awesome is that? Another example, a boy's height of five feet, five inches places him at the 37th percentile. Okay, so if we think about all boys in the entire world, we all, well, maybe not the entire world, let's just say the entire United States, then we know that 37% of boys are shorter or at that height, at that height or low. And that tells us that 63% are taller than this particular boy. So again, really, it tells you where you fit in the data, right? So 85th percentile, you're kind of towards the top. 37th, you're a little bit towards the bottom half, right? Another example is a 4-H student grew a 786-pound pumpkin, placing it at the 98th percentile. Uh, that means if we look at all the pumpkins grown, we are at the very tippity tippity top because 98% of pumpkins are below that weight. Only 2% are above it. So that clearly tells us that we're at the very, very high end. So again, these are what percentiles are. They tell you the percentage of data at or below you. Now, how do you find a percentile? Well, pretty easy if you understand the definition. So to find a data values percentile, simply count how many values are at or below the value of interest, then divide by the total number of data values. That's how you find a percentile, because it's simply the proportion of values that are at or below the value that you're interested in or your value. So the definition of a percentile is the percent of data at or below. Keep that in mind. Don't forget that. But the percentage above can easily be found as well but we just have no specific name for it, right? So go back to my example about the SAT scores. We knew that we were at the 85th percentile. That means if we look at all SAT scores, 85% are at or below whatever my score was. Okay, that's awesome. That 85% that is called a percentile. It has, a, the definition is it's the percentage of data at or below. But we don't even need a calculator. I, gosh, I hope you don't need a calculator to know that there are 15% of scores higher than yours. Now, we don't have a name for that 15%. We would just label it as the 15% of scores are higher than my score. Whereas a percentile is a specific term only used for the percentage at or below. 
The above is easy to find, but we just don't have a name for it. All right, so now this is where our quartiles come into place. Remember, I actually introduced this at the very beginning of the video. So we have our minimum all the way down at the bottom. We have our maximum all the way at the top. So if we find the value in the middle, that's the median, right? The median is known as the second quartile. So the second quartile is a very special percentile. It is the 50th percentile, because if you're the median, right in the middle, 50% of data is below that, 50% of data is therefore above that. So again, it's the 50th percentile. So the second quartile is a special percentile, the 50th percentile. Then we have Q1. Remember, Q1 is the middle of the bottom half of data. This would be the 25th percentile. Because again, what's a percentile? The percentage of data below you. So if I'm the first quarter, how much is one quarter worth? 25 cents. The first quarter is the 25th percentile. Now remember, obviously, if there's 25% below, that means there's 75% above. We just don't have a special name for that. We only name the percentile as the percentage below. We also have the third quartile, the third quarter. Three quarters are worth 75 cents, right? So the third quartile is the middle of the upper half, which puts 75% below it. So it's known as the 75th percentile. Obviously, that means 25% is above it. So our quarters simply break our data down into 25% chunks. The bottom 25%, then we got 25% between Q1 and the, and the median, the, the second quartile, 25% here, 25% here. So again, this is why the quartiles are a form of percentiles. They're just very special ones. So Q1 is the 25th percentile. Q3 is the 75th percentile. And don't forget about the interquartile range that we learned about as well. That's the spread of that middle 50% between Q3 and Q1. Now that's not a percentile, but it does you know, relate to what we're talking about right here. All right, so finding percentiles and quartiles in data, all right? Now, the calculator can find Q1 and Q3 for you, but the other percentiles, you do have to count to find them. So let me explain what I mean by this. So once again, if you use your calculator appropriately, and again, there is another video, pay attention if you want to watch it, that shows you how to use your calculator for this. But Q1 and Q3 can be found on a calculator. But if you're asked to find like the 85th percentile or the 10th percentile, you will have to do a little bit more math work to actually find that. So here, let's actually look at a set of data. So a sample of 13 females were asked to give their time in minutes to commute to work. So how many total minutes did they spend in their car driving to and from work? So um, we know how to find the mean. I, I hope we know how to find uh, the median, excuse me, the median. We're not talking about mean right now. The median. So with 13 values, remember I'm going to use my formula to find the location of the median. 13 plus 1 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my seventh value right there. 22 is the median. Then the middle of the bottom is the first quartile. So there's six values at the bottom. The middle there is the right in between 11 and 15. So 11 and 15 is 26 divided by 2 is 13. So 13 is my first quartile. And then the upper six values, the middle of them is right here in between 24 and 29. Add those together, divided by two, we get 26.5 as my third quartile. Pretty simple, easy. But let's just say that, you know, I said, hey, 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 um, I, I'm, I'm the girl that drove eight minutes. What is my percentile? Well, now we got to do a little bit of math. So now I'm going to count how many values are at eight or below. Well, that's easy. One, two. There are two values at my value of eight minutes or lower, and I'm going to divide by 13. So two divided by 13 would be my percentile. Now we typically round percent. I mean, I know that I, I, in my classroom, at least I always talk about rounding to three decimal places or three significant places after decimal. But for the percentiles, we typically just round to a whole number. So two out of 13 would be the 15th percentile. So approximately 15% of values are at eight or below, which means 85% of values would be more than that. Now, the other cool thing is that we can actually find percentiles and quartiles in graphs. Now, we just got to be careful here to really take our time and understand that we, we, you know, the one drawback that we've talked about with histograms is we don't actually have the actual data values. We just see how many data values fell into each interval, bin, or class. So, for example, in this example here, 100 people were asked how much money they just spent when they were leaving a drugstore. 
So for example, we know somewhere between nine and $11, right? Cause remember I only labeled every other one. So this would be seven, this would be 11. So between nine and you know, 11 people spent between nine and $11. Okay, so again, the, what, the, the only negative thing here is I don't know how, what those actual prices were. I know 11 people fell into that range, but I don't know what their actual prices were. So I'm not gonna be able to determine exactly what the quartiles are, but I can get a pretty good indication of where they would fall. So let's first talk about finding the median. So there's 100 plus one divided by two. This is gonna tell me the location for the median. So 100 plus one is 101 divided by two is 50.5. So I simply have to figure out where's the 50th and the 51st value because the median is going to be right in between them. So this is where we start adding eight plus 13, 21 plus 11, 32 plus 14, 46. Now, after this bid right here that has, you know, after I get to the $13 mark, I have accumulated 46 values. There's 22 in the next bin, so that means the 50 and the 51st are both somewhere in this bin. So I don't know exactly what the second quartile, the median is, but I do know that it falls somewhere between 13 and $15. Now, what about the first quartile? Well, the first quartile is the bottom of the bottom, the middle of the bottom. Sorry, I keep messing that up when I try to say that. So again, if we think about the bottom, okay, there's 100 values, right? There's 100 values. The middle of the bottom, well, there's 50 values at the bottom. So what's the middle of that? Well, that's going to be right around that 25th value. So where's the 25th value? Well, 8 plus 13 is 21. So the next bin has 11. So that means the 25th value has to fall somewhere in here. So somewhere in this bin from 9 to $12 is my first quartile. It's gotta be somewhere in that bin. Again, the negative is, I don't know exactly what those values are, but there's no doubt about it that the 25th value, 26th value, right? Right in the middle there is gonna be somewhere in that bin. And then the same thing, right? For Q3, it's the middle of the top. Well, if there's 100 values, the top has 50 values. And the middle would be the 25th. You know, you could look at it two ways. You could count 75 from the bottom or 25 to the top, right? So I'm actually going to count 25 from the top. So we got one, two, three, five is eight, nine, 10, 11, 16, and then 16 plus eight is 24. So that means that the 25th value from the top would have to be somewhere in here. Somewhere in here would be my third quartile. So my third quartile would be somewhere between 15 and $17. Okay, so again, I'm just thinking about it. I got 100 people, right? Actually, 100 makes it really nice to think about. The 50th is in the middle. So that's why we found the median is right in between 15 and 51. And then we looked at the bottom, which would be the 25th value from the bottom. That's going to be Q1. And we looked at the 25th value from the top, and that's going to be right in here somewhere. So again, pretty simple. Again, can't emphasize enough. The only negative thing is I don't know exactly what those values are, but I do know exactly where they will fall. Oh, here we go. Here's another example. Fuel economy for a random sample of 2015 model year vehicles. So we looked at 15, um, not 15, they came from 2015. We looked at several different cars and we uh, wrote down their gas mileage and every dot represents the gas mileage. So first off, how many total cars do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have 16 total vehicles. So if I said, all right, let's find, um, let's find the median. Okay, well, that should be easy. So let's see here, 16 plus one is 17. 17 divided by two is eight and a half. So right in between eight and nine is gonna be the median. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's the ninth right there, right between the eight and the ninth, right? If I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, here's eight, here's nine. So right in between there is going to be my median. Well, every dot in that row is 31. So right between 31 and 31 is 31. So my median is 31 there. It's pretty nice. All right, let's do a uh, quartile or a percentile problem. Let me say, all right, um, if a car has 30 miles per gallon, 
what's its percentile, okay? So I'm gonna count every car that is at or below 30 miles per gallon. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven out of the 16 cars are at 30 or below. Seven divided by 16. Again, we typically do a whole number here, so that would round to 44th percentile. 44% of cars in this sample are at 30 miles per gallon or below. Again, all I had to do was count. All I had to do was count. And uh, technically, even looking at my calculator, it's 0 0.4375. So again, we typically round that to a whole number, so we'd say the 44th percentile. So finding percentiles is really, 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 really easy. You just count the number of values at or below it, divide by the total, and you'll figure out where you fall in the data. So 30 miles per gallon is a little bit below the median, so it's in that bottom, the bottom half, um, but it's just below the bottom half, right? 44th percentile. All right, pretty simple, hopefully not too difficult. Um, sorry for my messy handwriting, but hopefully the, the, you know, the examples here are really easy. We're not trying to overcomplicate things. The key thing is that you understand the definition of a percentile and that we understand that the special percentiles are the median, the 50th percentile, Q1, 25th percentile, and Q3, the 75th percentile. All right, that's it.